Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. I'm glad you found your way here. On this channel, I aim to make sure you have the information you need about all things rheumatology and immunology to make the best health decisions for you. Today we are talking about the ANA test, specifically the pattern that is often reported with the ANA result. Don't know what I'm talking about, but I've recently had an ANA test done. We'll stick around and we'll get into it. anti-nuclear antibody is a blood test that is done to screen for autoimmune conditions. So when you go to your doctor and they have some concerns about you having an autoimmune condition, either based on the symptoms you are having or maybe some other abnormal blood test that popped up in your routine test, they will typically check an ANA. But as I've talked about before, the results of the ANA test are not black and white, and a positive result does not automatically mean you have an autoimmune condition, and a negative result doesn't automatically mean you don't. The results of the ANA are always taken in context of what other medical conditions you have and what your symptoms are. And the result itself can sometimes be used to help figure out how to interpret it. Now, ANA tests come in different varieties, meaning the lab has different ways of detecting whether your blood has anti-nuclear antibodies. Each method has pros and cons, and getting into the specifics of the way the tests are run, it's not really what I'm here to do, but just know that the ANA test is not an ANA test, is not an ANA test. Just understanding this can provide some useful information when attempting to interpret repeated ANA tests you may have had over the years. It's not uncommon to have had ANA tests in the emergency room, which will then be using the hospital's lab. Then years later, done in a primary care doc's office, which may use one of the major lab companies. And then again, in a rheumatologist or other specialist office. Now, I have often faced questions, and to be honest, a little anger from people confused and frustrated that a positive ANA result from a few years ago is not being given enough attention by their current doctors. It's, it's tough because two things are true. The presence of an ANA can come and go over time, both in those with and without autoimmune disease. And two, the way the test is actually conducted in the lab can influence if a result is positive or negative. This is why we still rely so heavily on your symptoms and other lab tests. So now that that is out of the way, let's get into what you really came here to learn, which is what does the pattern that is reported with your ANA result mean? So when your ANA is done via immunofluorescence or IFA, which by the way, is considered the gold standard method of checking an ANA, it is reported back as a titer and a pattern. It is not simply a positive or negative, and it is not simply a number. Now the titer can be reported as one to 80 or one to 1280 and everything in between. Now usually, the higher the titer, the more suspicious for actually indicating autoimmunity, but this is highly variable. So take that statement with a big chunk of salt. The pattern that is reported is based on what the cells look like under a microscope after a special dye has been applied. As of this recording, 29 different pattern types have been identified, but honestly, there are only about five or six that are commonly reported. Now, just a side note, even reporting of the patterns has variability as this is mainly done by humans, but that's likely to change as AI solutions can identify patterns with more consistency. Also keep in mind that the identification of the 29 patterns and what conditions they are associated with is new. The International Consensus of ANA Patterns or ICAP has only recently structured their findings, and it takes a while for information like this to go from a paper to actual practice. All right, so homogenous. Now, the homogenous pattern can also be called nuclear homogenous, and it's called this because when the dye is applied, it spreads out homogeneously over the entire nucleus. Now, this can be associated with lupus, autoimmune hepatitis, which is liver inflammation due to autoimmunity, or juvenile idiopathic arthritis, which is an RA-like condition that can happen in kids. 
Now, lupus, autoimmune hepatitis, and JIA are very different conditions. So when this result comes, the next step is about determining which of those conditions I'm most concerned about and then chasing that one with more questions and more tests. The next pattern is speckled. Now, the new nomenclature now separates out different types of speckled into nuclear large core speckled, nuclear fine speckled, nuclear dense fine speckled. I'm gonna hold on the nuclear dense fine speckled as that one deserves some special attention. But nuclear fine speckled and nuclear coarse large speckled can be associated with things like lupus, Sjogren's, dermatomyositis, and scleroderma. Again, these are all very different conditions and the next step of questioning and testing is really reliant on what any particular person's symptoms are. Now, a word on dense fine speckled. I wanted to highlight this because we are more and more recognizing that this staining pattern has a negative association with autoimmune conditions, meaning the presence of this pattern points against the presence of an autoimmune condition. Now, to be fair, this statement is only true if the staining is due to an autoantibody against DFS-70, which is a test not every lab will run. Now, it is not uncommon for a rheumatologist to get a consult for someone with a positive ANA, and the pattern is dense fine speckled. This will automatically lower the concern for something like lupus, but of course, as we always say, it still depends on your symptoms. I wanted to pay special attention to this pattern to point out two things. One, a positive ANA result does not automatically diagnose anyone with anything. And two, our body is always making autoantibodies and simply finding the presence of an autoantibody in a lab test does not mean there's disease. The next pattern is centromere. Now this staining pattern is strongly correlated with the presence of an anti-centromere antibody, which is a whole different antibody test in and of itself. And it's associated with the development of a condition called limited scleroderma or Crest syndrome. Now Crest syndrome is very different than lupus and will put someone on a different path if this is what the diagnosis is. If you have any questions on this, I have a whole other video on that and I'll put the link in the description box. Then finally, we have the cytoplasmic pattern. Now, this is now understood to be a variety of different staining patterns that we used to put under one umbrella that we call cytoplasmic. For those observant biology lovers, you may be confused. I thought ANA stood for anti-nuclear antibody, meaning this test was looking for antibodies against stuff in the cell's nucleus, not the cytoplasm. Okay, now remember, our cells have lots of different parts. The nucleus, which is the heart and brain of the cell, and then the cytoplasm, which is like, you know, the goo of the cell. Dear God, please don't come after me for calling cytoplasm goo. Something in medicine wasn't 100% accurate. Shocker, I know. We now know that these types of autoantibodies, and more specifically, these types of antibody tests, can find autoantibodies against stuff that live in the goo, not just the nucleus. Okay, so what does cytoplasmic pattern mean? Well, depending on how specific your lab is going to be, it can be associated with hepatitis, hepatitis C, lupus, myositis, or mean nothing at all. So what do we make of all of this? I know that this has been a lot of technical and biological information, I know. But the key point I wanted to try to make was that the science of the ANA test is still changing. It is becoming more refined, but these changes and insights are not brought into the clinic overnight. It would be lovely if this test result could be as black and white as the ink and paper it's printed on and could give us definitive answers to the what is wrong with me question. But the ANA test simply can't. It's a test we use to guide us and point us in a direction, but next steps will always mean asking more questions and running more tests. Now, I really love for these videos to be food for thought and conversation starters. And I like to include questions that you can ask yourself and you can take with you at your next doctor's appointment. So think when you've had your ANA tested, was it reported as a single number or as a titer and pattern? If it was reported as a single number or simply a positive or negative, do your symptoms warrant repeating the test, but this time using the immunofluorescence technique to get a more specific result? Now, when interpreting ANA results, 
Context is everything. To help your doc have more information, come with the answers to the following questions. What have your symptoms been for the three months prior to your ANA test? I want you to rank them in order of frequency, starting with your daily symptoms and ending with your every blue moon symptoms. Did you get diagnosed with any other medical condition three months prior to your testing? Did you start any new medications or supplements prior to your testing? All right, folks, that's what you need to know about ANA patterns. If you really want to go down a rabbit hole and be inundated with specific antibodies and possible associations, you can check out anapatterns.org, ANA patterns but be warned. Your doc, even your rheumatologist, may not be up to speed on the details of all 29 patterns, as this is all new nomenclature and details and associations are still being worked out. I hope this helped. Thanks so much for staying till the end. If you liked it, it really helps out. If you can hit like and subscribe, share this with anyone you think could benefit from this information. Like I said, we're here to pass on some practical up-to-date information you can then take with you to make the best health decisions for you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.